So you've probably come across a pin bar trading strategy that goes something like this. You wait for price to come into an area of support. You wait for the pin bar to form. Then you get long, put your stop loss below the low of the pin bar and aim for a minimum of 1 to 2 risk to reward. So this is what you do, right? You start scanning your charts for this trading setup, right? Waiting for price to come into an area of support. Waiting for the pin bar to form. And the problem is this. When price comes into an area of support, it starts trading higher immediately without giving you a pin bar setup. So you missed the move because there wasn't a pin bar to start with. So has this ever happened to you? Because if it does, then today's video post is for you. Because I will share with you what a pin bar really means and how you can actually identify trading opportunities in a market without waiting for a pin bar. So all this and more in this week's video post. I'll see you there. Alrighty, so let's have a brief run through and understand what is a pin bar. So a pin bar in short to me represents, you know, price rejection. I don't like to memorize candlestick patterns or whatsoever. Instead, I like to understand what the pattern is telling me, what the market is telling me. So in this example, the bearish pin bar, what you have is price opens over here. The bulls came in and took charge and pushed price higher. And later, the bears came in and said, uh -uh, that's as high as you're going to go, my friend. And they pushed price all the way back lower, closing at these lows over here. So what you have over here at this week is simply price rejection. Rejection of higher prices. And for this bullish pin bar, again, it's just the same principle, but on the opposite end of the spectrum. Price opened over here. The bears came in and took charge, pushed price lower. And then the bulls came in and said, no, 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 my friend. That's as far as you're going to go and it pushed price all the way back up higher and finally closing over here. So what you have over here is just rejection of lower prices. So the, the, the thing I see with most traders is that, you know, they say, oh, right now I see a bearish pin bar. You know, I'm going short over here, place my stop loss above this high and price is going down. Right, so they make these kind of assumptions in the market. And let's look what happens if you, if you do such thing. You can see on this chart over here, this 4-hour chart of the dollar Canadian, you have a bearish pin bar over here, right? Rejection of higher prices. So what trader will do is they go short, place their stop loss above this high. But the thing with this approach is that, you know, you are not looking at the, the picture of the market. You're not looking at what the market is trying to tell you. You're just simply memorizing patterns and trade it as it is. And if you do that, that's a very low probability trade. Now, because if you look at this chart, number one, the trend is up, right? It's an uptrend. And number two, something that you may not realize is that when you trade such patterns on the lower time frame, you realize that you are actually going against the trend as well. So if you look at this chart, this is the same chart, the dollar Canadian, but only difference is that it's on a 15 minutes time frame. So this green box over here is basically the same bearish pin bar we saw earlier. So you can see over here, it opened here and finally it closed over here. So giving you a bearish pin bar, right? This is the rejection of higher prices. But if you were to take this trade, can you see what you're actually doing? You're actually going short into an area of support on this lower time frame. So you have two things going against you. Number one, you're against the higher time frame trend, right? Against the higher time frame trend. Number two, you're also against the lower time frame trend. So you're Basically, a counter trend trader on the higher time frame and the lower time frame. So, what are the odds of this trade actually working out? Right? Just think about this. Okay, another example. You can see over here this chart this is the Canadian yen, dollar, the daily chart. And again, oh, okay, Rainer, I see a, a bullish pin bar, right? Price rejection. So, you go long over here, stop loss below the. You put your stop loss below this low over here, all right? Possibly, maybe, you know placing a buy stop order above this high of this pin bar. Right, so number one, you're against the trend on the daily chart. What about the lower time frame, the hourly chart? What does it look like? Well, you can see the same pin bar you saw earlier is basically this green area over here. Priced open here and finally closed somewhere here. So you have rejection of lower prices here. But if you look at this chart, does this look bullish to you? Right, in fact, if you draw a trend line, chances are you know, you're going long into this area of resistance. So again, you're against the higher time frame, 
and you're against the lower time frame. And this is definitely something what I call a very low probability trade. So what can you do about it? Well, what I would encourage you to do is, number one, trade with the trend on the higher time frame. Because for most pin bar or engulfing patterns that you actually see on your charts, on the lower time frame, they are usually a retracement on the lower time frame. So you can't really do much about it, but what you can do to improve your odds is to trade with the trend on the higher time frame. And number two is to look for confluence factor like support and resistance. This would greatly increase the odds of this kind of pin bar and engulfing patterns to work out. So we'll share with you a few examples, all right? Support in an uptrend, you can see this is clearly an uptrend, right? Price come into an area of previous resistance, now turn support, then you got rejection of lower prices. So is this now a much higher probability trade, right? Number one, you have a trend with you. Number two, you have you are trading at an area of support where potentially there are buyers who would come in and push price higher. Can you see the difference right now between trading the pin bar randomly on the chart and trading it in the context of the market structure? Another example, right? Resistance in a downtrend. So you have a downtrend. This is a resistance that you can see, right? Then you have this pin bar or over here, or maybe an engulfing pattern, whatever you call it. Again, can you see the difference between this pattern and the previous example I shared with you, where you're just, you know, going long just because it's green and going short just because it's red? No, 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 no. That, that's, just, that's not the way, right? Look at the big picture, okay? So now you may think, oh, wow, Rainer, this is, this is exciting stuff, right? Also, I just look for this kind of patterns in the market. But let me share, you, share with you another example first, all right? This is not the holy grail, right? There will be failed trades in this example. Again, it's an uptrend, come into an area of support, right? This is the, what I call a bullish engulfing pattern, right? It's possibly a failed trade because price trade higher before coming down lower once again. So it's not the holy grail. Nothing is, right? Trading is all about probabilities. It's all a numbers game. But if you can find an edge, you can find something that gives you positive expectancy in the long run, then all you need to do is to manage your risk and execute your trades consistently, right? So I just want you to know that pin bar itself, you don't want to trade it in isolation. You want to trade it in the context of the big picture, right? like the trend, right? Area, like support and resistance. This will greatly increase the odds of your trade working out. And now this, this is a, a solution for you. But this solution does not come without its own, uh, what I call, drawbacks. Because a lot of the time, I see traders just focusing on these pin bars. Right? They, they, they look for it in pin bars, in an uptrend, and support area, like what I just shared with you. And here's the thing. If you only focus or try to memorize these kind of patterns in the market, right? it's not wrong. But what's going to happen is that you're going to miss a lot of trading opportunities. What do I mean by that? Because right now I just shared with you, okay, Rainer, I know, right? In an uptrend, price comes back into an area of support. I wait for a pin bar to form. I go along and expect higher prices. That is fine. You, you, you can wait for that. But if you're just solely waiting for this kind of pin bar patterns, you are gonna, you're going to miss a lot of trading opportunities in the market. Why do I say that? Because recall earlier, in our earlier example, I don't like to memorize candlestick patterns. I like to understand the structure of the markets. So I, I shared with you earlier that pin bar is just a form of price rejection. That's all that there is to, to a pin bar or engulfing pattern. They're they are just showing you price rejection in the markets. So if you look at this chart over here, right? This is a chart of euro dollar, it's in a downtrend. This is an area of resistance. And you come to an area of resistance, you wait for that pin bar, right? Waiting for the bearish pin bar. Waiting for it to happen. But it didn't. And then you say, oh, okay, I don't have a bearish pin bar. Okay, let's move on, right? There's no trade down here. But think about this. The bearish pin bar is just showing you rejection of higher prices. Is there a sign that price is rejecting higher prices over here on this chart? There is. Look at this. Isn't this a sign of rejection of higher prices? Let me get rid of the lines, okay? You can see over here, price rallied up higher. Then it closed lower with a, a wick over here showing some buying pressure. And the third candle, price closed lower all the way here. So you can see that these three candles is telling you that there is rejection of higher prices. 
There is no pin bar down here. There is no engulfing pattern down here, but there is rejection of higher prices. So if you can interpret this kind of message from the markets, you will find that you have more trading opportunities instead of just memorizing certain patterns in the market and wait for it to and, and unfold. Right? You're just sitting on your hands all the time with not much trading opportunities. Right? Another example you see over here is an uptrend, right? Price. This is a previous, I'll say, a, a swing low or support area. Price then came into this area, right? This bearish bar come in. And then the next bar, you have a gap lower. And then it closed higher. So there is no bullish pin bar here. There is no bullish engulfing pattern here. But what you have is rejection of lower prices. Again, these are trades that you have to be taking. Right? If you are taking pin bar and engulfing kind of setups, then these are the trades that you should be taking as well because you believe in price rejection. Right? And this is another way of showing you price rejection on your charts. So let's do another example. So again, area of support. Price came into this area of support. And then what? It get higher and finally closed higher over here. So what is the message of the market telling you? It's rejecting lower prices. Am I right? So you can see over here, the last few examples I shared with you, there isn't any pin bar. There isn't any engulfing pattern, right? Because if you were to focus only on these two patterns, you would have very little trades. Okay, so my point is this, right? It's fine to trade pin bar and engulfing patterns. It's perfectly fine. But you have to understand what these patterns are telling you. What is the message of the markets? Don't memorize it pattern for pattern. Instead, look at the structure of the market as a whole and then spot areas of price rejection. So let's do a recap. So in this video post, right, first thing we talk about is that to increase the odds of your pin bar pattern working out, I would prefer that you trade in the direction of the trend. And know that, you know, you're not trading pin bar, you're actually trading price rejection. Right? Sometimes price rejection will not come in the form of a pin bar. It will not come in the form of an engulfing pattern. It may come in a form that you probably never see before in your life. And that is still price rejection. And this is exactly what pin bar and engulfing pattern represents. Price rejection. So think about this, all right? I, I hope this video is actually, you know, something that lets you think about how your trading is like and how whether, you know, you can actually improve on it. Especially those who are actually trading pin bar and engulfing pattern. Okay? So if you find this video useful, right, I have the subscribe button at the bottom right of this video, right? Hit the subscribe button so you'll always be updated whenever I publish a new video. So if you have any questions, any comments, don't hesitate to let me know. With that, I wish you good luck and good trading. I'll talk to you soon.